Live coverage of CES 2010 has been brought to you by 42nd Street Photo. Visit them online at 42photo.com. Here again at the iHome Suite here in the North Hall CES. We are in day two of CES and we have uh, again just seen some fantastic, fantastic new innovative products from uh, iHome. Uh, we have a very, very special interview today. Okay, we have uh, Tony Bon Jovi from uh, Bon Jovi Acoustics and we're going to tell you a little bit about the uh, IP1 speaker system and then we're going to show you the, the IP2. Okay, which is kind of the uh, the new the next version of the IP and the uh, you know Bon Jovi acoustics. You guys are going to be really impressed with this. Tony, thank you for well, taking some time. I know you're in high here. demand today. Yes, um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm going to take the time for you guys because I know your website. Fantastic. And I actually go there. I actually go there. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate that, Tony. Okay. Tell us a little bit about uh, Bon Jovi acoustics and the IP one. Okay, well the. The IP1 is actually a, uh, it contains uh, new technology, it's patented, and uh, the, the way it works is we actually uh, take a look at the program material as if you were going to be in a studio, and we modify the program material, we break it down, or disassemble it a little bit, and then we remix it or we digitally remaster it to fit this application. With the digital technology that we use, which is the, uh, the Bon Jovi Digital Power Station up there. Power Station was my studio in New York City. Mm -hmm. That's the background. That's where I come from. And uh, I'm we, from Stanford, Connecticut. So okay. I'm, uh, you know, we oh, like so to call ourselves New Yorkers. Well, that's okay. It's close enough. <laughs> CBS Labs were somewhere near there, yes. I think, way back a long time ago. But what we're able to do is to digitally, just like you see on television, when you see a record collection offered and it's digitally remastered, what they'll do is they'll go in to the studio and they'll add back to those recordings what they took out in order to fit it on that little tiny groove on that 45 RPM record. Well, we have the ability to do that. Same thing as digitally remastering, only it does it in real time. It's active technology, it's dynamic. And what that means is it's constantly looking at the program material and it knows the difference between recordings that were done a long time ago and those that were done of 100% digital, like Urban Records, all the music is uh, digitally produced or by computers. Uh, and if you look at some of the older recordings that have real musicians on them, the sound uh, is a little bit different because the microphones are picking up the instruments and recording the voice and all of, uh, and strings and horns, and it, it doesn't have the same effect that the new synthesized music has. So it, it can differentiate between that. It recognizes all of these different things, all of these different voltages. It's the technology doesn't know the difference between music, uh, movies. It just knows that it's looking for sounds, looking for voltage, uh, electric, ele I'm trying to explain this in layman's terms. It's very difficult. It's easy for me to be very technical. Uh, it's looking for differences in voltages. And if it sees, if it, it wants to, it wants to raise everything up to a particular level, thereby expanding the, the frequency response or the sound. And all of a sudden, you hear things in the recording that you normally wouldn't hear. And that's this is the first time that this has ever been done. And this is the first time it's ever been used in consumer electronics with the IP1. And, so, and, and uh, I'm sorry for interrupting, but so in essence, you know, for like uh, a non-audiophile, it's it's almost uncompressing the music for you. I guess you could say that. What, what it does is it, it compensates for uh, some of the time compression uh, because when you do that, you chop up the music, and although those sounds are there, they're diminished by virtue of the fact that that time compression has taken place. Because it's active, what it does is it through the amplifier section, it actually builds up those harmonics that were were normally there or that that could be there. I'll let you hear it just a little sure. bit. It's kind of hard to read with a microphone, but you can hear. Now let's let's go over. This is the IP1, and this is 100 watts. It's by amplified. So there's two amplifiers. One one for the these low frequency drivers, and then one for the high frequency drivers here. And by doing that, that eliminates a lot of distortion because one amplifier has a specific job to do, and when you have two, the one takes care of the mid range and the higher 
frequencies or sounds and the first amplifier takes care of the mid-range and the lower sounds. So they work independent of each other and you could make a much better sounding system like that. Right. Normally to do this as little as five years ago, this, this unit right here with the te technology that we're using would probably cost about $1,500 to do this with discrete components. But with digital code, we're able to do this and become cost effective. So the whole idea is to bring the studio quality sound in reach of the consumer. So when he takes this home, and all the calibration is done in a real audio control room next to studio monitors. Right. And of course, in the studio, we've worked with everybody from Frank Sinatra to Aerosmith to Diana Ross and Whitney Houston and, and Bruce Springsteen and, and the Bon Jovi band, of course. And by having all those experiences and expertise, we have a, an advantage over most consumer manufacturers because we actually know what made up the content. So we have, the, we're, we're the best people to be able to say, well, that's what it's supposed to sound like. Right. Plus, by utilizing the actual studio power station where they where the records were made, well, <laughs> right. I'm in an environment I already know. And it's myself and three or four other engineers that know how to use the technology. Let me show you what we're coming with next. This is the IP2, which is uh, kind of a, a, a baby sister to the IP1. Mm -hmm. However, uh, and it's, it, it costs less, but at the same volume. Now, this one has more power, so it'll go louder. But if you set these at exactly the same volume, you won't be able to tell the difference. Because, once again, we use the digital technology to match the speaker and amplifier combination to play back the program material the way it's supposed to sound. And only with digital technology can you do that. We remaster, again, but for the IP2 which is just a smaller version uh, right. than the IP1. And the IP1 is uh, 100 watts. Yeah, this right. is 100 watts. And uh, the IP2 is 50 watts. Yes, that's right. correct. And the IP1 uh, price point is 299 right? 299 And the IP2 is $199. $199, yeah. yes. So, fantastic. Well, you know, and the extra hundred dollars you save, you can download as many songs from iTunes. So you can start your catalog of about seventy-five songs well, that, for your iPod. Yeah, exactly. And all, all the bands that that you recommend. All the bands I've worked with, and you can so. even Sinatra and and, and uh, Carly Simon and Bruce Springsteen and Aerosmith and the Bon Jovi band and all of them, you can play back on here, and it'll sound exactly the same. Uh, way that we intended them to sound in the studio. Well, Frank Sinatra is one of my favorites, and being oh. in Vegas, uh, it's very uh, apropos, very Frank Sinatra. You know, very yes. Frank Sinatra. The Rat Pack. And Tony, okay, I appreciate you taking some time. It's, Thank uh, you very much. It's a and I know that that's a great website, and everybody should stop down to their Best Buy. Apple Store, Costco's, and take a listen at Best Buy and you can hear what this sounds like because it's actually, you can plug your iPod in over there. Thanks, Tony, again. Okay. Appreciate your time, you. guys. Tony Bon Jovi from Bon Jovi Acoustics. And, uh, you know, we just, it's a privilege to be able to talk to someone that's so influential in the music business. So, uh, again, come back frequently. Again, this is day two of CES. Day three is going to be great, too. Thanks, guys, and we really appreciate your support. We'll bring, be bringing you more great content from CES.